Welcome to the introduction of Forecast Master 2.0. I'm Jim Lewis, CEO and founder of Enhanced Retail Solutions, and I thank you for taking the time to uh, look at us today. We're really excited about this uh, redesign in our key demand planning software. ERS turns 10 years old uh, in July this year, 2012, and we're very excited about that. In honor, we've updated a lot of our uh, software tools, and we're especially excited about demand planning. We all know it's all about inventory, and how can we be more efficient, how can we uh, estimate more accurately what the needs are going to be, how can we help the retailer stay in business, that's what it's all about. And we've taken everything that we've learned over the last 10 years, and we've redesigned the tool into an incredibly easy to use, web-based, cross-platform application. It's, it's just beautiful. And there's many, many benefits to it. We're just going to take five minutes today and kind of give you the highlights of it. Great integration with your ERP system. So it can integrate the POS data, the store level inventory, store sales, and integrate that with your wholesale on hand production. Uh, so that you see the entire pipeline, which is very important. There's easier assignment of parameters. We know that when you're dealing with hundreds or thousands of items and, and you want to tweak each one of them in its own special way, that's not easy to do. So we created an interface that lets you handle that seamlessly. A completely new feature is user-defined business rules, which really lets you teach the system how you forecast. In other words, if you're making adjustments based on stores not having enough inventory or new stores coming online or a certain sales trend, and most systems you know, calculate something just based on uh, POS activity or ship activity, this adds a new dimension. This lets you build in that logic that says, hey, if my last six weeks look like this, then make these adjustments in these periods. It's a new way of thinking about forecasting, and it's very cool, and it's a major time saving. There's filtering and search all over the system, meaning if you're trying to get to something quickly, um, if you have lots of items or lots of forecasts, you just start typing in a search box, and it filters the results to exactly what you're looking for. You can save multiple versions of a forecast. So you may make an adjustment in a given period and uh, to make up for something that you know about, uh, maybe some event that's going to occur, maybe a promotion or whatever it might be. And so you're changing a sales estimate or a buy quantity in a certain period. You want to save that. And what happens is you're going to come back a couple weeks later and you're going to be like, oh, what did I do? I forgot what I did there. And this enables you to comment everything to show the revisions that were made so you, you can track the, the life, what happened to this item throughout its forecasting career. Um, because it's web-based and cross-platform, it works on just about every mobile device, including the iPad. And it is truly incredible. You can, you can create and view and really work with a forecast on the iPad now. A uh, little harder on smartphones just because you don't have the screen real estate, but certainly if you get that question that comes up about how much is this worth or what are we estimating on this item, you could pull that up quickly and see that on a smartphone, which is just incredible. And finally, easier setup and maintenance of data and forecasts, just the entire process. And really, when we started to redesign the system, we just said to ourselves, what is it? that is going to make this easier for the user. We went out, we talked to our entire user group and, and all the existing clients that we have, and we came up with five things that we needed to keep in mind to make it really easy. One, you have to be able to easily categorize items, so we did that. You have to make setting up seasonal sales curves easy. We did that. This, the setup of business rules because so many companies are understaffed today, you, you just don't have the time you used to have. So we need the system to help us start thinking about these things so that when a forecast is drawn, it's 80, 90, 95% of the way there for you, and you don't have to do a lot of tinkering. And 
business rules helps you do that. Assigning parameters. So once you've categorized your items, you can now assign parameters at the category level, and then all of that will trickle down to your items. Of course, you can always adjust individual items, but being able to assign it at a category level is, is really going to save you time. And then finally, actually running the forecast um, has been made easy. It's a very seamless way to look at it. And when we get to the screens, which you'll see in a minute, we, we created some easy to follow um, logical icons. So you'll see an action column on just about every screen, and the different icons depict the different things that you can do, whether it's editing or managing or viewing reports or the, the obvious uh, things that you'd be doing in the forecast. But enough about showing you in a PowerPoint. Let's just switch over really quick to the actual application. And here we are live. And I've run a forecast here just to kind of show you what this looks like. You can see I have one version up here already that was created a few days ago. I can always go back and look at that forecast if I need to. But this is the most current forecast. And you can see it's taking all of the store level information, like the store on hand and, and average sales and year-to-date sales. There's some curve information here, some parameters, lead time and weeks of supply. Uh, there's also uh, wholesale information, my wholesale on hand, which unfortunately right now is zero. That's why you see a lot of red and negatives. And you see future orders of 38,000 units. So, Right away, I know on this item, OK, I don't have anything on hand, but I do have some goods coming in. And you can have as many items as you want. The pane is laid out pretty simply, uh, where you can just click through the different pages to get to items you're looking for. You could type the item in, and you'd get there pretty quickly. And everything is interactive here. So wherever you see the open boxes or the controls, you can jump into those boxes and you can make adjustments, and instantly the forecast will change on the fly. So it's, it's a very novel way of doing it. Um, there are all different reports that you can review, from exception reports to retailer views to wholesale views, sales by week, uh, units, dollars, just pretty much everything you need to know when you're running a forecast. Everything exports very nicely to Excel or PDF. It's right here. Um, if you change something, you can click Save uh, the Forecast. And these are the little boxes, the search boxes that I was talking about before that makes it very easy to search. Here I only have three items, but let's say I had 100 items here. If I just start typing, uh, if I'm looking for a certain item, you'll see the system comes on pretty quickly and starts my uh, search and filter here. And uh, of course, it didn't find that item because I typed it wrong. But anyway, um, there's a lot of usability that's built in here. Let's talk a minute about um, managing. So if we go to manage the forecast, this is the list of the different forecasts that I have. And over here in the action column, you'll see parameters with that icon. And that opens up the grid that allows me to assign parameters. And again, one of the things we heard loud and clear was we've got to make this easy. So you can download a template and fill it in from Excel, which is a very easy thing to do, and then upload it and get all your uh, parameters in. Or you can assign parameters one time up here at the category level. And then as I click my tree node here, it'll show me all the items that belong to that category. And I can make any adjustments in here that I want, or I can revert to the category view. So very easy to uh, come in and, and apply your parameters. And the parameters are like min quantities and lead time and weeks of supply. You can see some of them on the screen there. Skew grading, style grading. One of the other cool things, um, this is a new feature, allows me to create adjustments in any period. So I can say adjust units by 
a thousand um, starting in June going until July 28th, whatever it might be, and I can add as many types of adjustments as I want, either a percentage or a unit. So there's a lot of things built into the system that allow you to um, adjust it based on all the market knowledge you have. And of course, once you do this, all that information is saved persistently. It's right there when you come back to it and nothing, nothing gets lost, which is really nice. One of the other unique features is in sales curves. And sales curves, of course, display the seasonality of an item. So if I open our curve database here, now I, I have one curve here, but I, of course I could have many for different types of items. Here's my 52 weeks, and each week is worth a certain percentage of the year. And it's not so easy to type 52 uh, numbers in the grid. So we've also provided the ability to um, upload it via, via an Excel template. Or we're using a very interesting control here that allows us to visualize that curve. And we can actually drag and drop the points on the grid here. And then if I click Save, it will post it back to the database. So I don't have to worry about um, entering 52 numbers visually. I can create my curve. So we've talked about sales curves. We've talked about running a forecast and categorizing. What about business rules? So business rules uh, allow you to inject knowledge into the system so that when it goes out and it, and it uses the uh, different uh, methodologies that are here, which involve the sales curve or average weekly sales um, using different periods of time, this allows you to create a little formula that says, if any one of these events occurs, like if new stores are opening, or there's X amount of stores with no sales, or stores are over-covered or under-covered, or the store count has changed for a certain period of time, you can see there's a variety of these events that occur. So we'll say stores sold out. If my store sold out is greater than let's say 10 stores, if I have more than 10 stores that are sold out, then I want to adjust my sales by 2%. And I'd like to do that from this period to this period. Very creative way to build out and build knowledge into a forecast. And of course, you can create as many of these business rules as you like. So we're very proud of this system. And it's really taking forecasting to the next level. Let's jump back to our slideshow. And let's just see if we went over everything we did. Curves. That's pretty much it. So I know this was a very short overview, but if you have questions or concern, please give us a call, 212-938-1991. Visit us on the web, www.enhancedretailsolutions.com. Thanks so much for your time. We look forward.